Welcome to the next video in the ESP32 and LVGL series. In today's video, I will guide you on how to create and switch between multiple screens on a TFT LCD. Let's dive into the main content of the video, designing the UI on Squareline Studio. All right, first I will create a main screen title using the label widget. You can choose colors and font size in the style setting tab. And now I will add two buttons. The first button when pressed will switch to screen two. The second button when pressed will switch to screen three. Customize the size and color as you want. If you want to create an effect when pressing the button, go to the style setting tab, select state, and then choose the color you want for the press button. Click the play button to run the simulation. Okay, now I will add a label to the button. This button, when pressed, will switch to screen 2, so I will name it page 1. I will also create a similar button. This button, when pressed, will switch to screen 3, so I will name it page 2. Click the play button to run the simulation. Now I will create two more screens. In the widget tab, scroll down to the screen section and click on the screen icon to add a new screen. On screen 2, I will also create a title and a button just like on screen 1. I name it, this is page 1. Add the font size and colors as you want. I will add a button named back. The purpose of this button is to return to screen 1 when pressed. I will then create two more buttons to turn the LED on or off. One button will be named on, and the other button will be named off. Now, for screen 3, the UI objects are similar to those on screen 2. I will also create three buttons. One button named Back, which, when pressed, will return to screen 1. The other two buttons can have additional features according to your needs. I will fast forward through this part. Click the play button to run the simulation. Alright, now let's move on to a crucial part. Creating events to switch between screens using the buttons. Click on the page 1 button of screen 1. In the event tab, select add event. You can name the event according to your needs. In the trigger section, select pressed. In the action section, select Change screen, and then click Add. In the Event Configuration section, for Screen 2, select Screen 2. I leave the Fade mode and Delay Duration at their default settings. When switching to a new screen, you should delete the previous screen to ensure only one screen is active. This helps reduce the load on the CPU and memory. Click the Play button to run the simulation. As you can see, when I click on the page 1 button, the screen switches to screen 2. Pressing the back button on screen 2 does not return to screen 1 because the event has not been configured for it yet. Now, let's configure the back button for screen 2. Let's configure the back button for screen 2 following a similar process to the page 1 button. In the event configuration section, for screen 2, select screen 1. Add another action to delete screen 2 after returning to screen 1. Click the play button to run the simulation. As you can see the button has operated correctly. 
Now, I will continue configuring the Page 2 button to switch to Screen 3. The steps are similar to those for the Page 1 button and the Back button earlier. I will fast forward this part. I proceed to run the simulation and all the buttons function work well. On screen 2, I will create events for the on and off buttons. Go to the events section, select add event, set the trigger to pressed, and choose call function for the action. Name the function that you have just called. So the UI design part is complete. Now let's go to the project settings. To choose the folder to export the UI file and proceed to export the UI file. Next, let's move on to the firmware modification section. First, make sure to go to the lvconfig.h file to enable the font you have used in Squareline Studio. Change the value to 1 to use that font. Back to the main.cpp. I will explain a few important parts to note. First, you need to declare the GPIO pins for the rotary encoder, depending on your hardware connections. This is a pointer used to store information of the input device, specifically the rotary encoder. Create an array of three groups to manage the objects in the UI. Purpose. Each group can contain multiple widgets and allows you to switch or control between them, such as buttons, sliders, or checkboxes. In this example, I have created three screens. Each screen will contain one group. The group will contain buttons. I am using Rutus and I will initialize a task to control the UI, named task1. This function is used to create a group of UI objects, helping to manage and control the components on each separate screen. Create a new group to contain the objects for screen1. Similarly, Groups 1 and Groups 2 are the groups for Screen 2 and Screen 3. Add the Objects buttons to each group. Group 1 contains UI Button 1 and UI Button 2 for Screen 1. Group 2 contains UI Button 3, UI Button 4, and UI Button 5 for Screen 2. Group 3 contains UI Button 6, UI Button 7, and UI Button 8 for Screen 3. Set groups 0 as the default group, meaning the initial operations will control the objects in this group. The next function is just a state function to create an effect for the button. You can skip it if you don't use it. This function is used to add a buzzer when you press the rotary encoder, generating a sound to let the user know that the button has been pressed. You can enable it if you want. This function handles navigation tasks and performs actions based on the current screen and the selected buttons. Get the group of objects for the current screen. Assign the current group to the encoder for control. Get the current object that is focused, selected, in the group. Check the button press on the encoder. Based on the current screen, perform the actions. Press button 1, switch to screen 2. Press button 2, switch to screen 3. Similarly, for screen 2 and screen 3, you just need to change the assigned value of current screen accordingly. For screen 2, the value is 1. For screen 3, the value is 2. You need to place the group initialization function and the task group action in the void setup section to work properly. I add GPIO 26 to control the LED on, off for screen 2. You can configure it in the uievent.c file as I guided in the first video of the series. So the firmware modification part is complete. I will proceed to build and upload it to the ESP32. If this video has helped you find useful information, please like and share, and most importantly, leave me a subscription. Thank you all for watching the video. See you all in the next video.